Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone to God in the Midst. Get them radio. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is your Sunday school lesson this morning with Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. For those of you who are, are, are looking on Facebook, uh, there is sun shining in Huntsville, Alabama. And, and I'm just enjoying the sun this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got it shining on my face and I kind of moved forward so to give me a good, 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 uh, let's say vitamin D into my system this morning. Amen. 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 It's a wonderful day to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right minds, and giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for being our God. We thank you, Lord, for being God all by yourself. And we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise this morning. This this day, we ask you, dear Heavenly Father, the first Sunday in the new year, dear Heavenly Father, we ask you for a special blessing and anointing for this, this day and this entire year. We celebrate you on this day, dear Heavenly Father, because you're so worthy of the praise. We thank you, Lord, for, for giving us your darling son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who died on the cross for our sins and whom you raised from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that forgives us of all of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that heals us from all diseases. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus, Lord. Thank you for all that the blood does in our lives. And, Lord, we, we give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord Jesus, for for, for you are our God. You are, you are our keeper. You are our sustainer. And you are our friend that sticks closer than any brother. And, Lord Jesus, when you went up to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede on our behalf, you did not leave us helpless. You gave us your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit who who's guarantees us to the day of redemption, who keeps us, who, who, who guides us, who leads us, even corrects us when we don't know what we're doing, Lord. And then, Lord, even pray for us and pray through us when we can't pray for ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we just ask you to just bless us this day as we get ready to study your word. If anybody's dealing with anything, the Heavenly Father, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, whether it's financial, whether it's relationship issues, Lord, we just ask you to bless them right now, God. Heal right now. Make them whole, the Heavenly Father. We thank you for this, God, because we know that your word says it's already done. By your stripes, we are healed. Now, Lord, we just ask you to just bless us now. As we study your word, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. We, we praise God that he is truly true to his word, for he says where two or three are gathered in his name, that he is in the midst. God is in the midst. Welcome again to, to Get Em Radio, God in the Midst Radio. Hallelujah. For those who are live on Facebook, we... We thank you for being on with us this morning. Praise God. Praise God. And for those who are going to be listening to this recording at a later time, we praise God for you also. Amen, amen, and amen. Our lesson today comes from Daniel, the book of Daniel uh, in the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 1, and uh, the particular verses that we're going to concentrate on 
uh, verses 8 through 21. Um, but I'm going to uh, not only uh, deal with just the, the those verses that the Sunday school lesson uh, gave us to look at, I, I'm going to um, also deal, you know, basically with the whole chapter. So what I'm going to do first is, uh, since it worked so well last week, I'm going to uh, let the Bible Gateway software give us the reading of Daniel chapter 1. Amen, amen. And it takes about three minutes for them to read the whole chapter, but I think we will all be blessed by it. Amen, amen. Chapter 2. Nope. In the second year of... Go back. There we go. Daniel. Chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, mm -hmm. along with some of the articles from the temple yes, of God. Yes. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia, and put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family yeah. and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names, to Daniel, the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of yes, you. Yes. Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, so they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. Amen, amen, amen. Good, good, good. I, 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 I like uh, listening to the, um, the Bible uh, using um, this software Bible Gateway. And uh, it helps me uh, in, in some cases to learn how to pronounce the words or the names of people because sometimes the names seem so so difficult for me to pronounce. But anyway, our, our lesson today is titled Sincere Faith. A sincere faith. And and as I said, the the, the lesson uh, text is verses eight through twenty one of Daniel chapter one. But we're going to look at, at all of them a little bit as we discuss this lesson. Uh, our memory verse for today is uh, verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion 
of the king's meal, nor with the wine which he drank. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Our key concept for today is that Daniel and his friends were sincere, that means honest, about their faith, what they believed. And so our keys for kids, our message for children this morning is to one, have faith in God and trust him with your whole heart. Number two, we should live for God and make right choices. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to come back to all of this later. And number three, God blesses us when we obey his word. Oh, hallelujah. That though, those are three things I, we, we all need to just grab a hold of. Having faith, living our lives, making great decisions, and being obedient to God's word. And so as we look at this lesson, our aim for today is to deal with some learning facts, to recount the details of the first test that Daniel and his friends faced as captives in Babylonia and how they responded. Our biblical principle is to be a person of faith in a hostile culture. Oh, I don't know about you. It, it's, uh, I, can get, I can just go, go crazy over that part of the... Because we live in a very hostile culture. Yes, yes. Some people are claiming to be children of God, but, but they don't live like children of God. People, people are walking around being just evil. Evil is all around us. And, and, and we're living in a hostile culture. And then finally, our, our daily application for this lesson is to demonstrate respect of others, tax, and grace in our own circumstances. Yeah, so so we 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 have to have to be diplomatic, if you will, even in the hostile situation in which we are presently living in. Um, the book of Daniel is 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 one of those great books. Daniel Daniel is one of those ones who who God has chosen to 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 show forth his power and his might and his love and God's own faithfulness even in the midst of great trials and tribulations the the book of Daniel opens uh uh with the statement that that God uh, has delivered his people into captivity God himself has delivered his people into captivity, uh, the, the, uh, and 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 this 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 lets us know that there comes a time when God will correct us, and this is what they were going through. Daniel and all of the exiles of Judah under Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And, and 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 their experience, their experience, we 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 get a first hand account of their experience in captivity. We we we, we don't we're not just not a second hand account. This is a first hand account. And and what we find in, in the book of Daniel is that God promised the children of Israel, no matter what, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, even in your captivity, even when you are, 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 are being punished. Your, your nation is being punished because you're my chosen people and, and you went around committing idolatry and, and I had to do something about it. And yet, I still love you. I still love you. I still love you. I, I, I was laughing the, uh, the other day uh, uh, when my son and his girlfriend and her children were over and and you know their punishment these days uh for children is different than when we were kids many times when we did something wrong mama and daddy pulled out the belt and put that belt on us well th these days that the punishment is okay go sit in the corner and put your nose to the wall and for five minutes now you do it for five minutes everything gonna be all right that a different kind of punishment, but but it still shows that 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 parent loves their child, even though they have to correct them, because God God corrects those that He loves. 
house. And so here it is. The children of Israel are now in captivity. And we're going to be concentrating in the book of Daniel on this one man, Daniel, and his three friends. Now, now his three friends, we, we are familiar with their names that they were given, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those were the names that were given to them by King Nebuchadnezzar and his crew. But but their 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 uh, um, real names their real names is 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 uh, um, let me get the names right now is Hananiah, Michelle, and um, Azariah Azariah Azariah. There we go. Thank you, Lord. And those were their real names. And so this 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 naming thing this this changing of names reminds me of 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 the movie roots and how alex haley told a story about the uh his ancestors and how they wanted one to be named toby and he said my name ain't toby he and then they kept telling him your name toby and said no my name is not toby and and and, and what what the deal is when someone changes your name they're also trying to change your identity. And Daniel and the three Hebrew boys did not want their identity changed. Oh, hallelujah. Don't call me everything you want to call me. I know who I am in the Lord. And so this lesson, this lesson today is going to deal with the faithfulness of, 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 of Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. They're going to show us how faithful they were to God, even in the midst of bad circumstances. Yes, it's easy to be happy with God when everything is coming up smelling like roses, but, 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 but it's hard when you're going through trials and tribulations. You want to find anything and everything to solve your problem. But God, but God, God is the only solution. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we're going to start this lesson. Our outline today is in three parts. Our outline today is first, purpose over pressure. And that's verses 18 through 14, or 8 through 14, excuse me. Fear, faith over fear, that's verses 15 through 16. And then testimony after the test. Oh, yeah, 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 that's this something beautiful, this something beautiful. And uh, um, I just got a message over Facebook to pray for my father. And, and, and uh, my father is, uh, I believe it's 80, 87 years old this year. And so I like to just stop for a minute and just pray for my father. I don't know what his exact condition is, but we're just going to pray for him. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for, for Herbert McCoy, Senior Lord. We just ask you right now that whatever he stands in the need of, dear Heavenly Father, that you provide right now in the name of Jesus. Touch him right now from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. He's your child, the Heavenly Father. He loves you, Lord. So love on him and take care of him. Heal him where he needs to be healed. Make him whole where he needs to be made whole. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen and amen, amen. So coming back to the lesson, excuse me, I had to do that when I get a message like that, that kind of shakes me a little bit. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, it, and I'm looking at the text and I'm, excuse, excuse me, when, when people put this kind of stuff on Facebook as I'm as scrolling up, it's not my daddy, it is uh, 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 Sister Kelly's daddy, Reverend Kelly's daddy. And so we do pray for Reverend Kelly's daddy as we apply that to to uh, um, um, my father and her her her, fa her father's name Val Kelly. So Lord, we we lift up Brother Val Kelly. Amen. Amen. As as we just prayed for Herbert McCord, we pray the same for Brother Val Ke uh, Kelly. Amen. That you touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Amen, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Heal him right now, Lord. 
Amen. So now back to the lesson, back to the lesson. Um, so our first section is purpose over pressure, purpose over pressure. So, so now let's look at what the story says and we, we're going to read it. We're going to read it out of the new King James version of the Bible. It says in the new King James version, starting at verse eight, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portions of the king's delicacy, nor with the wines which he which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief unit that he might not defile himself. Now, God had brought Daniel into the into favor and God's and, and goodwill with the chief of the unit. And the chief of the eunuch said to Daniel, I fear my Lord, the king who has appointed your, uh, who has appointed your food and drink for they, for, for when should he see your face looking worse than the young man who are your age, then you will endanger my, my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, uh, Hananiah, uh, uh, Mishael, and uh, Az Azariah, please test your servant for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our parents be example, examined before you and the appearance. of the young men who ate the portions of the king delicacy as you see fit. So deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this matter and tested them for 10 days. So here is the situation. Daniel and, 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 and the three Hebrew boys are, are, are now uh, in captivity and they have been chosen because they were uh, a part of the uh, chosen folks of, of Israel. They were very uh, handsome, no physical defects. They, they were well informed. They were quick to understand and qualified to serve in the, the, the king's palace. And the king had decided that he wanted them to be taught all the language of, uh, and, and literature of Babylonian. And then they would be given their assigned meals every day so that they could learn how to eat and be trained and, and grow and all of that kind of stuff. And so that's what was going on. But Daniel saw the king's table. Daniel saw the king's meal. Daniel saw the food, and it was food that he saw as being not of his Israelite, Jewish, Hebrew tradition. Most likely there were there were pork on the on, on the table. There, there were other unclean animals. Uh, being fed to them, the, the 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 wine wasn't the wine that 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 they served in Israel. It was wine that was fermented that would make you drunk and all of that kind of stuff. So 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 Daniel resolved in his heart. He purposed in his heart to not defile himself with all of this raw food and wine. One of the one of the the, the 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 jokes that go around on Facebook, people say, "Well, would you cut off your best friend's arm for ten million dollars?" And so many people say, "Yeah, I cut it off, buy him a prosthetic, and we go party." <laughs> I said, "Oh Lord, have mercy!" We, no, 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 the, doing doing wrong to make to think you're gonna make something better. It's, it's not right. And, 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 and here's Daniel. He resolved in his heart that he was not going to eat this food. We call this the Daniel diet. If you followed it, it was very popular three or four years ago. And 
kind of this year I hadn't heard any too much about it where, where people just eat vegetables and for 10 days and drink water and they're using this Daniel's diet to, to lose weight. And, 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 and then, but, but that ain't why Daniel was doing this diet. Daniel, Daniel was doing this diet so, so that he could show his, that, that his faithfulness to God. He didn't want to defile his body. And so, what I love about this text is that not only was he faithful and, 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 and he had a purpose, but, 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 but he had purpose over pressure. What do you mean? What's the pressure? Well, well, first of all, he had to ask permission because he understand he's in captivity. He's a slave. He had to ask permission. And he asked permission of the chief official for to 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 not defile himself in this way, and 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 and, and God showed him favor. I, I I just said something to somebody. See, you're in situations, even in your job, in your school, and and and, and the pressure is on, and 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 and, and, and things aren't working out, but but you ain't talked to nobody. You haven't asked anybody. You, you, you have not because you have not asked. You just thrown up your hands and gave up. Daniel didn't do that. He believed in the power of his God. And he, he stood his ground and asked for favor. Diplomatically, he asked for permission. And God showed him favor. And had compassion on him. The official, he told him, said, look, man, I, I'm afraid of my Lord, the king, because he's the one that has assigned me to, to give you guys food. And if he came and saw you guys after after uh, 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 I give them food, after, after you've not eaten well, not eaten at his table, and you looking bad, he'll cut my head off. But Daniel, said to the guards and the chief officials, look, 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 let, 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 me, let me say this. Can, can you just test us? Examine us. Give us 10 days and examine us when we just eat nothing but vegetables and water and compare our appearance to the other young men who are eating all of the raw food. And so, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys made this agreement with the chief official and they were tested for 10 days. That, that's, that's having purpose over pressure. Yeah, I know they had some peer pressure. Folks was probably talking about them and say, look, now, 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 y'all, y'all not eating the, y'all, y'all, y'all don't know what y'all missing. Ooh, this food good. You ought to try it. I know you're hungry. I, I know you this. That, that's peer pressure. We always have peer pressure. I don't care if you're a young man, you're going to have peer pressure. A young woman, you girl, young girl and young woman, you're going to have peer pressure. But even when you get older, because we always trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's not our job. We, we got to have purpose over pressure. Keeping up with the Joneses is, is not what we need to be doing. We got to do what God wants us to do. And so here it is. Here it is. They had purpose over pressure. Our next part of our text, we're going to be dealing with faith over pressure. Fear, faith over fear, verses 15 and 16. Listen to it from the New King James Version of the Bible. And at the end of the 10 days, they, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacy. Thus the steward took away the portion of delicacy and the wine and, and they that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. Yeah. 
at the end of those 10 days, they look healthier and better than any of the other young men that had done, had eaten the king's portion. Their faith, their faith and what God could do in their lives overrode their fear. They trusted in the Lord. They depended on the Lord. And the Lord came through for them. Oh, hallelujah. We have to have faith in God and trust him with our whole heart. And he will always come through. Don't let our fears stagnate us. Don't let our fears paralyze us. We just have to do it the Lord's way. And the Lord will make a way according to his will and his way. And they made that choice. They made that choice. And God showed up. And so, this is the last part of our lesson. And I love this part. The testimony after the test. The testimony after the test. You can't have a testimony until you've had a test. You got to go through some mess before you can get a message. But I tell you, even if you feel like you're a victim, you can be victorious. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. And here we have, starting at verse 17. And this time, I'm, I'm just going to read it out of, out of the New Living Translation. I mean, the New King James Bible. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope. New International Version. To these four men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented to Nebuchadnezzar presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them and he found no one equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. As, as so they entered the king's service in every manner of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them. He found them 10 times better than all the musicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. God, oh, hallelujah. God gave them favor because they were faithful. And, and, and because they were faithful, they passed the test. Word of God says that we ought to obey God and obey his will. And the songwriter picked that thing up and said, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to trust and obey. The Lord blessed them and showed them favor. The Lord increased them in knowledge and understanding. And then in addition, he gave Daniel visions and dreams of all kinds. Not just because they had this diet, but it was because they were faithful in choosing to do God's will. And they came out with a testimony. God's favor was all over them. God's favor just shined on them. And they glowed with the anointing of God. And did this even in the midst of captivity. In the midst of living in a culture 
that was against them. Oh, hallelujah. We need to pick this up from Daniel. We don't, we don't have to be conformed to this world, as Paul says, but we ought to be transformed with the renewing of our minds. Yes. The world can do everything it wants to do, but we are children of God. We are signed, sealed, and delivered into heaven. And right now, while we're here on this earth, we are to live a life that shines forth the glory of God in our lives. Not just with our lips, but with our whole entire life. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful, wonderful lesson. Having faith in God and trust in him with your whole heart. Living your life, because that's how they lived. And made their whole life for God and made the right choices. And God blessed them because they obeyed his word. Here are some points to ponder. As we end this lesson, we should remain steadfast in our trust and obedience to God. Two, we do not have to be disrespectful or hostile to others in our pursuit to honor God. In other words, you ain't got to have an attitude all the time. Got to, I'm going to show you. No, 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 no. You don't have to be that way. God is in control and he's given us power. So we need to act like we have some and be respectful to others. P power respects power. In every circumstance, we ought to be faithful to God and leave the results to him. He'll make a way out of no way. He, he, he'll turn any situation around and say, but God, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> And God will give us knowledge, skills, and ability to use for his glory. I just praise God for that. God, God comes through so often, all the time, not just some of the time, and giving us the knowledge we need, the skills that we need, and the ability that we need. Don't let anybody tell you you're worthless. Don't let anybody tell you you have no skills, no knowledge, and no ability. God will give you one thing to do. And if you use it to his glory, you'll make it a long way. And number five, God's faithfulness and blessings will be evident wherever he has placed you to serve. Even in a hostile environment, your favor, your blessings, God's faithfulness over your life will shine through like the morning sun. Hallelujah. So let's have sincere faith. Honest, truthful, not pretending faith in God. Oh, hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you that you love us and that you help us to be faithful to you. And that you're always there with us every step of the way. Because you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Help us. In every circumstance or situation that we're in, whether it's things of our choice or things that are happening to us out of our control, help us, Lord no matter what, to still be faithful to you, sincerely faithful. And we thank you for this because we know that without faith, it's impossible to please you. And we want to please you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Before I close the recording, um, 
broadcast, I'd like to always uh, pray the prayer of salvation with you. For those who are listening now and those who are listening in the future. This prayer is based on Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 9 and 10, down to 13. And it's all about confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And that God raised him from the dead. And that whosoever calls on him shall be saved. None of us will be put to shame. And so we always like to ask the question, if you were to die today, do you know where you will be? Will you be in the eternal hell or in an eternal heaven? Well, I, I recommend heaven. We go through enough hell down here. So let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to Help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, Facebook, until next Sunday, we'll see you then. If you want to get on the conference call with us to discuss this lesson, comment on it, questions, call us at 619-639-4733. That's 619-639-4733. That is the Get em God in the Mitch radio conference call line. Amen. Bless you on Facebook. Bye-bye.